All right, so we're going to do a little terrain sculpting here. So we're going to start with a little bit of a classroom session and basically go over some different terrain features. So, uh, you know, hill is pretty self-explanatory. It's just a hill, right? Uh, it goes down around and it's the top of uh, a hill. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. So saddle is this little thing in the middle here. Uh, oftentimes it's found between two hills. It has a depression on this side, depression on this side. Keep that in mind. Uh, these are your major terrain features usually. Uh, here we have a valley. Think of a river flowing between two mountains. It's often what creates valleys, uh, but could also be something like a glacier. Anyways, uh, so one side's going to be a little bit higher. The other side's going to go down. And then uh, it's usually higher on each side, like so. A ridge, more or less, um, it's going to flow in a direction like so, so it'll be higher on this side, it might be lower on this side, and then lower here, and lower here. Pression is basically like a sinkhole. That's what it is. It's just a little divot in the land, and that's all that is. Uh, these are your secondary features, so draw is going to be this guy in the middle. Pay particular attention to this shape. Um, it's going in this direction. It's kind of like a valley in a way except that it's a it's a minor feature so it's not as big as a valley uh, same with spur here but it's like the inverse um, it's going out like so kind of like a ridge but it's a much smaller feature okay and these usually come from the tops of hills so just keep that in mind uh, cliffs everybody knows what a cliff is for the most part it's a near vertical or vertical uh, face there right to a piece of terrain Cuts, this is often done when creating roadways. You might be going through some mountains, and you'll notice that uh, there's like a cliff or something like right here. Okay, basically what they've done is there's a um, there's a spur coming out like this, and they've blown it up with dynamite, and then they moved a bunch of bulldozers through to cut a flat road uh, next to that section. So think of like mountain passes and stuff. That's kind of what that is anyways. Um, a fill is very similar, so it might be like a roadway here, okay, and they filled in this land a little bit because there might be some water here, a lake or an ocean, and they might want to create a seawall or something. So that's kind of what a fill is, basically. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump into sculpting now. So I'm going to hide those, get it all out of the way. Press Shift A, create mesh, plane. So tilde key, view selected. All right, now we're going to jump into uh, edit mode here. Select this face. We're going to subdivide it. Open up the subdivide menu down here, and we're going to bump it up to 10. Not good enough. We're going to subdivide it one more time and bump it up to 10. Okay, so we need a little bit of mesh here to work on. We're going to hop over to sculpt mode now. Uh, just a side note, the... Um, If you're going to be putting this into a game that you're going to use an alpha map to uh, transfer it over or whatever, you want to lock X and Y so you're only going up and down with the mesh. You're not moving it left to right or forward and backwards. Um, and that way you can create alpha maps real easily and you can create uh, displacement maps, etc., etc. It will make it sculpt a little bit differently. It's not going to feel quite the same, but um, it'll be all right. So... We're going to start with the draw tool here, and I'm going to turn off these wireframes. Now, the trick about terrain is you're going to use those terrain features to kind of create whatever terrain you want. That's really the fundamentals there. And so mountains and cliffs and ridges, they all kind of follow the same kind of rules for the most part. Uh, it helps to have photographic reference, so keep that in mind. Look at photos. Look at aerial photos, like satellite views, looking down on mountains. Those ones are real good. They help out quite a bit, um, but also just look at regular photos. And I'm going to start with very little strength here. We're using Sculpt Draw, and I'm just going to start knocking in some ideas of um, terrain features that I might want to create. Okay. And I really don't know what I want to make here, so I'm going to adjust my size. I am using a tablet, a drawing, an art tablet. So if you have a pressure-sensitive pen, I highly recommend using it. And I'm just going to create 
a little bit of a shape like this. Now I'm going to work up. I'm going to make sure I don't go back down uh, on the plane here. So we need to define some hilltops here. So let's do a hilltop here. Let's do a hilltop here. Uh, we're going to sculpt out around right here. And yeah, this is going to take a little bit of practice, but it's not too bad. We're just sculpting. That's all we're doing. And um, we don't have to be very precise with this because these are going to more than likely just be distant mountains, um, not necessarily plain areas because a lot of times you're going to end up creating your terrain in the uh, game engine that you're working in. But uh, you certainly can take this and put it into a game engine, just so you know. Let's put a hilltop here. And so this is almost a saddle right here. It's not quite. Let's actually make it a saddle. Okay, we'll go with we'll go with three hilltops. Earth and a saddle in between them, like so. All right, and now we can actually uh, sculpt this out. Let's make them a little bit bigger since we're working with such a low resolution mesh here. Let's just make them a little bit bigger. Work them out. It's okay to be a little crazy at this point because we're not real sure what we're doing and where yet. I'm I'm digging this kind of little ridge here, so uh, work out the sides a little bit, make it a little bit thicker. Okay, let's make one of these a little bit bigger than the other. All right, so this is pretty good. Let's draw a spur here, put a spur out here, a spur out here. This one can have a little spur here, a little spur there. Okay. Let's pull those out a little bit. Now keep in mind, like I said, the spurs are thicker up here and they get thinner down here. You kind of want to mimic those a little bit. And if you look at a top-down image of mountains and cliffs and all that fun stuff, um, you'll notice that there's a certain pattern to how they um, are created. So I'm going to use draw sharp here and change the stroke spacing to 1%. This usually helps out quite a bit, but um, I'm going to do this a little bit strong to get started. So this is a hilltop, hilltop. That's a, another hilltop, hilltop, hilltop. There's a lot of little hilltops and ridges, so keep that in mind. They're everywhere. Um, and they just kind of are like little secondary hilltops and stuff. So you can do things like that. Try not to make them too symmetrical. You can put three over here. Break up that pattern a little bit. Okay, so um, when you look at mountain ranges from the top or ridges, they have very unique patterns. Sometimes they're smooth. Sometimes they do like a straight line and then curve the other way. They do some cool stuff. So, I mean, it's just really, it depends on on that particular uh, mountain. But they do some of these interesting kind of shapes. Sometimes they're just straight lines like that. So keep that in mind. And uh, we're going to connect these dots doing that with this sculpt draw sharp. We're going to drag them all the way to the floor here. Okay. Uh, go a little bit easier towards the bottom. Okay. But once you mimic that pattern a little bit, it actually makes everything look a lot nicer. Okay. There we go. I got that one going. And they can extend. These spurs can extend quite a ways out. Okay. Or these ridges, if you want to call them that. 
They're basically the same thing. All right, so this is going to be kind of steep, but um, I want to create a sharp cut and then make it wider at the base. I'm going to smooth this pretty heavily, I think. Okay. Steal a little section down like that. So now we have some draws going on. I'm just hitting control to go back the other way. All right. See where this is going? Got this kind of shape now. We're going to smooth it all out a little bit. We'll do the tops. These areas. And towards the base here, we're actually going to smooth it quite a bit more. And get up in there in between the uh, draws as well smooth those out all right and that is the basic idea of creating terrain in a nutshell i mean you can go crazy with this and up up res it so you can do a su another subdivision if you need to um, just keep going at it uh, personally i wouldn't do that but not yet anyways that what i would focus on is creating these kind of like secondary draws and um, we'll cut out shapes here we can kind of get this going on really work your fundamentals first like you want to make sure these shapes are right and they're going to create what you want the patterns and the designs you want. I'll make a little section here like that. Like a little saddle there. A little draw in here. Okay. You see where this is going. Now this is pretty universal. You can do this in any game engine. And it'll work out just fine. And we're just going to keep going through it real quick. And at this point, you can go ahead and start this on your own. You don't have to keep watching this video for me to explain the rest. You um, you know, kind of approach this in your own ways. This is just how I do it. I've seen a lot of other artists um, create mountains in completely different ways. So it's entirely up to you on how you want it to come together and how you want to build it. A lot of these will either be near vertical or they'll start to slope out. Just keep that in mind. This can be a little bit challenging to understand at first, but not too bad. A lot of them come straight out to the side too, which is pretty interesting. And lower terrain just ends up being noisy usually, so it's not, you know, you could do like a little stuff like this uh, it's usually pretty noisy you might cut in some like little waterway kind of stuff and then just smooth it out not a big deal ok 
can see how this is starting to work. Might make the brush a little smaller to get a bit more interest going. Personally, I put it on the little plus sign up here, so it draws like the regular draw tool instead of being opposite, because sometimes it gets annoying when it's opposite and you switch between the two. All right, try and get it finished up here. You can see how this is going. Now, uh, doing really small Low detailed stuff is super easy. As it gets more detailed, it's going to become a little bit more complicated. Uh, you're going to have a lot more to do. So you do want to use alphas as much as possible. So use some kind of alpha uh, textures and things like that. So you can fake uh, cliffs or rocks or boulders and all kinds of other fun stuff because it can get can get pretty pretty intense, I'm not going to lie. So, so far I'm liking this. I might cut a little bit out of that one. Yeah. And keep working it, okay? So I add a bunch of little nuances down here. Like I said, I don't normally go down. Well, I'm breaking my rule right now. You want to kind of finish this out like that. It's a good reason why you don't want to do that. It's so you can properly create an alpha. And I'm just going to give you a quick example how you can do that. Um, alphas are real easy to generate with the grab doc add-on. And so basically you go to the link in the description below. I'll have it there. You can download the grab doc add-on. I'm going to work this all the way out to the edges. Even though it's not really required, but you can see how some of this low terrain stuff still matters. Um, sometimes you might create... right shape sometimes you might get it wrong it takes a little bit of practice but download grab doc go to edit preferences add-ons install it all that good stuff and uh, you'll be able to create alpha maps super quick and easy um, so I get kind of just this fractal stuff going on here on the edges I'm gonna actually smooth this all out just a tiny bit so it looks a little bit nicer nothing too crazy I got rid of so much detail let's just do like a very light pass. Turn that strength down real low. There, something like that maybe. All right. And once you have that add-on, we're going to shade this smooth. So right-click Shade Smooth. Once you have the add-on installed, you can go here, press N, go to Grab Doc, uh, Set Up Scene, boom. There you go. And you'll see that it's actually intersecting with this mesh. It may or may not be something you want. In my case, it's not something I want, so I'm going to actually move up this mesh until it's just sitting above the axis there. Okay. Once I do that, I can go into here, um, set an export folder, name what I'm going to export. Um, in this case, I would just do only the height so I can create an alpha. I'll click height there. That's a preview. 
and you can see we can create that kind of an image real quick we just click export now uh, once we, we once we do that and so we can actually sculpt with this again or we could take it into something like unity um, it may not work 100 percent perfect when you transfer it into a game engine you might have to adjust things a little bit but um you know that's going to be that's going to be a process that you have to go through okay and um so for the most part that's it you have sculpted terrain that quick that easy uh, and that's kind of the proper way to do it so you can create ridges like this you can create cliffs and all kinds of other things canyons and etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, it's great for low quality uh distant objects so if this is a background mountain not a big deal um, you can generate those alphas and use those in um, game engines when you're sculpting in game engines so that's something you might want to do so you can make uh, certain pieces or certain uh, you know different shapes and stuff now how does this compare to say the a.n.t landscape add-on uh, so lands the a dot in you got to type it in when you try to enable this thing it comes with blender you just got to type in a dot in dot and it should pop up and um, landscape generator right here click it we're going to add it we're going to use a preset here we're just going to do um, let's see let's just do a cliff okay we'll put a cliff in real quick you can see what a cliff looks like we want to do Another one. Let's do large terrain. You see, it does this number. It's a little too large for me. Let's find something else. Bike stones. Oh no, that's way down there. I didn't know what that was. Mesa. I'm looking for one like what we got going on. Oh, here's one. There we go, mountain, of course. So, I don't know if they had a ridge in there, but you can see their mountain, shade it smooth. Um, same resolution, and ours is going to be a lot, lot more tidied up and pretty, prettier, anyways. Uh, it's real smooth right now. Theirs has got a little bit of noise to it, but it's basically, theirs is trying to do the same thing. It's just, um, you know, it does it automatically, but now we're doing it manually, more or less. So keep that in mind. And you can also add noise in here using a displacement or using some kind of alpha texture. So I'm going to use an alpha texture. Sculpt draw. Um, I'm using alpha manager here, but I'm going to click new. Go down here. So this is how you do it without the alphas manager. Click open. And I'm going to go to my textures folder. And I have a folder called alphas. I have one called uh, sand. Sand01.tiff. There you go. And so this sand height map. Okay, I generated this from a textures.com image. Uh, I took it into substance bitmap to material and generated a height map. That's all I did. And um, so you can sculpt things like this out, or you can you can find another free program to create height maps from images. Uh, it will work for you, okay? Now, once we've done that, we can switch it from tiled to area plane. Go to stroke. Go to anchored. If I just drag, should be able to drag here. Okay, I oh, hope we got the wrong object selected, my bad. So that's too strong, obviously. I can add a little bit of noise to this. And it's going to do okay. So, or you could use, instead of using sand, you could just use a noise um, image. But that little extra bit, I think, adds quite a lot to it. And doing it on the tops here to break them up just a little bit more. 
Oh, that's quite useful. So right along the ridge edge. Maybe a little too much, but find a balance there that you want. Put them on top of the hills. All right. Maybe down here at the base. Make it a little bit bumpier. Maybe a little too much, huh? All right. don't want to overdo it this is very slight uh, touch there all right so I'll let you be the judge of which one you think looks better and um, which one makes more sense so just keep in mind you can make any kind of formation you want because you know the, the rules of landscape now and there's only certain types of terrain features in the world so um, there are some like special rarities that are kind of one-offs, but generally speaking, they follow those five major ones and the, uh, the secondaries there, the draw and the uh, spurs. They're pretty much ridges and valleys, more or less. And kind of limited speaking there, but um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching the video and I will check you out in the next one. Take care.